What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we are taping in the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District at the Lincoln Building, home of Cascade Media Group. Today's special guest has appeared on the program before. We are pleased as punch to welcome Dr. Dennis Carpenter, superintendent of Hickman Mill School District, back to What's Up, Kansas City. All right. Thank you. Thank you for uh, appearing with us today. Dr. Carpenter, let's start with the good news. Friday's announcement, the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Hickman Mill School District scores right at 70.7%. How is this good news? Excellent news in our school district. We, we were a district that was somewhat in a downward spiral as it related to our results. So to get our community energized again around the news of an 18.9% increase or a 26.5 point increase that moves the district from a score standpoint from an provisionally accredited score to a fully accredited score. That's exciting and the kind of shot in the arm that our community needs and deserves. What does this announcement mean for the future of the district and accreditation? That's an interesting question. Um, what it means is we have scored a fully accredited score and a conversation would need to begin at the DESI level in terms of does this mean an immediate transition into fully accredited status or will DESI follow some of the processes they followed in the past that suggest the district might need to show the improvement over multiple years. At a minimum, if you look at the most recent case in the Kansas City, Missouri School District, I think the commissioner wanted one additional year or what amounted to two years under the MSIP-5 formula. So we're excited because we've scored there. We don't see ourselves going back. And as a matter of fact, I'll be in conversation with the commissioner in Jeff City next week. So I'm excited to sit down with her and really talk about where we are, how we got there, and how we plan to sustain. And we'll cross that accreditation piece when we, when we get to it. Now, Dr. Carpenter, I'm sure a lot of work went into getting the students ready uh, to take tests and to be assessed, however assessed they were by Desi last year. Uh, can you give us highlights from last year? Did you go in like Joe Clark and, no. <laughs> and really lay down the bullhorn and say this is how it's going to happen? That's a, that's a good question. Um, we believe that we have to prepare our kids to be lifelong learners. And we believe that we have to put the most competent men and women that we can in front of our students. So with that being said, it's bigger than a test mm -hmm. one, one time on one given day. It's more about preparing our kids to be some of the best learners in the metro area and beyond. So we really focused on our teachers as it relates to professional development around the whole notion of research-based instructional strategies as it relates to a clear system through which we conduct the benchmarks along the way to see if our students were getting what we were teaching and we looked at those benchmarks and they informed our instruction throughout the year and it really became an issue of working with every single kid to reach his or her maximum potential. Are we there yet? Absolutely not. Are we on our way? Absolutely. Now Superintendent Carpenter, last year you, uh, you instituted a lot of ambitious goals. Do mm -hmm. you feel that you are on the right track? Yes, we are on the right track. Uh, we've done some ambitious things. I like that, that phraseology in terms of how we're approaching improvement. Mm -hmm. And we've met some goals throughout the course of this year that are setting the district on the right path. In addition, we have new implementations this year that are further continue the growth that we would like to and we, and we expect to experience. When you look at the only school district that I know of in the state of Missouri that's offering full day pre-kindergarten education to all four-year-olds in the district, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. We looked at our school start times before the big national study was released about a week ago. We were looking at this last year and we went ahead and adjusted those start times to reflect the sleeping patterns and the thinking patterns or what brain research tells us about when young people learn. So we've dealt with those issues. We've instituted a freshman center for the coming school year to really isolate our ninth graders and look at making certain that they get every credit they can before going on to 10th grade one or two or even in some cases we've experienced in the past three credits behind mm -hmm. and we know that that greatly diminishes their opportunity to graduate with their cohort so we've taken a look at really really tough issues that are systemic and looking at how we can affect change by doing what the research is already out there and what it already tells us. Well, Dr. Carpenter, it sounds like that you are doing things maybe a little differently than your predecessor, uh, Dr. Williams. Have you been in touch with her at all? I have not had a lot of contact with Dr. Williams. Mm -hmm. What will you do differently this school year, if anything? 
we, we've developed a five-year plan. It's embedded in the community. It's, I like to tell people it was developed by the Hickman Mills School District and community for the Hickman Mills School District and community. So we have our plan. It's outlined, and we're going to follow it. So we were very, very focused on a one-year blueprint last year. Mm -hmm. We focused in on it, and we followed through. Did we reach every single goal in the plan? Absolutely not. But are we better because of the fact that we focused on a plan? The results would tell you that we are with an 18.9% increase, the largest increase of any district in the suburban or urban portions of the state of Missouri. So we're excited. Now, are those part of your moving forward initiatives that are on the web page? Absolutely. You have our moving forward plan on the initiative, and moving forward captures the new initiatives for this school term. Mm -hmm. What you will find in that plan has already been implemented. Our ombudsman alternative ed facility, the changes in start time, the ninth grade academy, and of course, the four-year-olds mm -hmm. being in school. That plan guided us into this year. This year, we have a five-year strategic plan that can also be found on our website, and it's a mammoth document that's going to guide our work for the next five years. Now, do you have any specific goals in line for this school year? Uh, we mentioned initiatives. Do you have any specific encouragement? Do you, do you tell your staff members this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to achieve it? Well, the main thing we're going to do is we're going to sustain improvement. I mean, when you have improvement, you don't want to be looked at as a one-time blip on the radar. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do is sustain and improve upon this year's results. And I think that's the focus of our entire team, phenomenal teachers approaching the work. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the best teachers imaginable approaching the work, along with building leaders who are really focusing on leading for learning. And as long as we can maintain that focus, we're going to be in good shape. Now, Dr. Carpenter, the Ruskin High School Golden Eagles are now one in one. Uh, a week ago, they didn't do so good uh, against Grandview. We have a new coach, Coach Thomas. Yes. What do you hope to see this year uh, as far as a football program? Go. I would just say that our athletic program is just as important as our academic program. Mm -hmm. And what we have right now is we have increased student participation in our football program, given the interest of Coach Thomas. And what that's going to do is that's going to help us in the classroom because if we can get from grades 9 through 12, about 60 to 80 kids mm -hmm. who are really focused on they're wanting to be a part of that athletic program. It's going to help us in the classroom. So that's most exciting. But also lots of things you learn in sports that help a young man transition into adulthood. So mm -hmm. if we got about, again, 60 to 80 students every single day learning more about being a man in a place called the United States, that's exciting. Ultimately, the community wants it to translate to wins and losses. And I can say that last Friday we had our first home victory from what I've been told in the last four years. Congratulations. So that's exciting. Yes, and we do know that athletic department, a good athletic program, generates a lot of enthusiasm for the uh, Hickman Mills community. A little earlier you mentioned the Early Learning Center Project. The mm -hmm. I, I don't want to mispronounce Ombudsman. it. Ombudsman. Ombudsman, Hickman Mills. Uh, the new center. There are some of the new investments in the school and community. You now have all-day kindergarten for four- and five-year-olds. All-day pre-K. All-day pre-K. We already had all-day kindergarten. Okay, yes. all right. Uh, what in particular um, are, what, what in particular is it? Ozma Bun? What, what, what Ombudsman. Ombudsman. I did yes. mispronounce it. What, what program? Can you tell us a little bit That's about exciting. that? That's exciting. Ombudsman is a national framework for approaching alternative education. Mm -hmm. Lots of districts do lots of things in the name of alternative education, but it's a pretty so difficult endeavor because what you don't want to do as a school district is to find a kid who may have challenges in the regular classroom setting and in the name of alternative education, you just transfer them to another building and try the same strategies that didn't work in the regular school. Right, That's right. probably, st it stands to reason that you're not going to be successful in that arrangement. So again, we consulted the research mm -hmm. and we looked at some national programs that really look at kids who struggle in the regular setting for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Not all behavioral, although behavioral is one part of it. And when you look there, you found ombudsman. It kept coming to our attention. We had an opportunity to go out to Philadelphia and really look at the program there in one of the largest districts in the country. Wow. And we found that it was one of their top alternative ed programs according to their own internal rankings of about 24 programs. So we're excited about it being here in our district. It was an investment in mm -hmm. the community. Um, Ombudsman came in and took a building there south of Ruskin on Blue Ridge that was pretty much dilapidated. Mm -hmm. And they've come in and they've rehabbed that facility and it's a nice place for learning for those students who are assigned to that program with the ultimate goal of not only recovering credits, 
but also learning those social skills that they might need to cope in the regular building setting because the goal is to transition them back to our school setting. And that program is working with our students at the middle school, freshman center, and the high school level. Dr. Carpenter, you talk about this being a community investment. Uh, what other areas in the community would you like to see develop, whether it's business or community or social? There are lots of opportunity in South Kansas City. You, you will listen to the media and you'll find that South Kansas City, in my way of thinking, is on the rise. It's on the rise from an economic development standpoint. You have CERNA coming in about to make a major investment yes, in our community. Um, you're talking about to the tune of billions of dollars on the old Bannister Mall mm -hmm. site. Mm -hmm. So with that investment comes spinoff development is what I would call it. And we would hope that that spinoff development would in turn equate to additional tax dollars for our district and those dollars being used in the best interest of our students. So that's exciting. Now, is there anything that is not happening in the community that you would like to see happen? We're moving forward. Rome was not built in a day, and I can tell no, you that those issues we've attacked, we're getting great community support. We're getting great support from our limited business community in South Kansas City, and I would just encourage industry and business around the metro area to look at the work going on in our district and talk to Ms. Tara, who's our Director of Public Information and Partnerships, about how they might invest Mm -hmm. in the work that we're doing, not for Dr. Carpenter and not for any other reason except the boys and girls of the Hickman Mill C1 School District. They deserve it. Now, these past couple of weeks, you could not turn on the TV without being startled by the images that you saw in Ferguson, Missouri. Do you have any comments on the particular images that you saw? Wow. If you're in the business of educating young people, it has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with color, creed but it should tug at your heartstrings to see something of that magnitude occur in any community. And what continues to startle this superintendent is how this might continue to happen in predominantly minority communities. So I think that's a conversation that needs to be had. I think there's a way in which to have the conversation that might ultimately lead to some change, and we might feel the ripple effect of that change, I would hope, through throughout the country. We appreciate that. Dr. Carpenter, you have four degrees. We always admire the value of hard work on What's Up Kansas City and to see black men, professional workers who are leading in our communities. Uh, when the first African Americans did not go to Hickman Mill School District, it's been publicized until the mid-1960s. Over 60 years after the district has opened its doors, it's just inspirational and is an example to look up to you. Can you tell me, was it a long, hard road process to earn your credentials? Absolutely. I, we, we have a slogan in our school district, our mantra, if you will, and that's hard work pays off. And I will tell you that nothing comes easy in this business. I've been criticized at times for saying this, but I, I tend to stick by it. And here's what I would say. Oftentimes, you have to work a little harder um, as a minority in this business because we can just look at the makeup of this business. It's not made up of the majority of minorities. It's predominantly made up by the majority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some people can say, well, it's not fair that you have to work a little bit harder. But if you waste your time, in my way of thinking, about focusing on what's unfair, then you lose time that you can be using to, towards self-improvement. Mm -hmm. So we always talk to our folks about the deal. You know, the young kids, they say it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so because they say it is what it is, then we know what it is. Let's work harder and get to where where we need to be. That's my opinion. Some others, even in our community, don't share it, but that's fine. Let's talk a little bit about working hard. What were you doing professionally when you were my age? I'm 34. Ooh, that's a good question. Let me try to think back. I believe when I was 34, I was a associate superintendent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing with us today. Do you have anything that you would like to add, anything that we've omitted? It's always a pleasure partnering with the Cascade Media Group, and you guys do a phenomenal job. Thank you for keeping me informed. I tune in from time to time on the website and look at what other individuals are saying about the work that we're all trying to accomplish here in this community. So you do a mighty service. We appreciate it. We're glad to hear that, Dr. Carpenter. Dr. Carpenter, Superintendent of Hickman Mill School District, a special guest on What's Up Kansas City. Check out more video online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. And remember, the sky's the limit. Aim high. Shoot for the moon. If you miss at the very least, you would have landed amongst, amongst the stars. stars. Till next time, take care. CMG wants you to always remember the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Thanks. Thanks.